Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're dealing with a few issues that keep popping up age after age through reflection and examination of the scriptures. This time, what does the Bible say about manipulation? Manipulation isn't explicitly mentioned in the Bible, but there are descriptions of many kinds of behaviors that fall into the same overall definition. It's probably best to start with a short explanation of what it is. Sometimes, the word manipulation can describe simply using something with your hands or managing something skillfully, but that's not what we're talking about here. The definitions we're referring to are these. 2b. To control or play upon by artful unfair or insidious means, especially to one's own advantage. 3. To change by artful or unfair means so as to serve one's purpose. Doctor. When these things are applied to other human beings, manipulation can involve the use of lies, deceptions, psychological tricks, false framing of situations and other falsehoods to try to get people to do what you want. So let's go right for the jugular on this issue with... Thou shalt shalt not not bear bear false false witness witness against against thy thy neighbor. neighbor. Exodus 20, 16. If you're encouraging any kind of false belief with the intent to cause harm to anyone through that falsehood, that is a violation of this commandment, which is right at the core of Christian beliefs and values. This encompasses the various kinds of manipulation tactics quite well. Lies are direct false witness, as are falsehoods that aren't lies per se, but are still meant to cause harm. Deceptions carry the same goals as lies, even if they're delivered less directly. Framing a situation falsely is still a type of false witness, although not through direct testimony. And the purpose of a psychological trick is to acclimate a person to some situation or belief that they wouldn't choose otherwise. This lessens their freedom to make their own choices, which is definitely against them. Because of this, all types of manipulation can be considered false witness. Even if the thing you're trying to convince people of through these methods is true, the method being used is deceptive and is therefore false in some way. The only way manipulation could be justified, therefore, would be if it were being used to help someone without hurting anyone, and it's not hard to think of a situation like that. Telling your five-year-old that the fish he's about to eat is actually chicken might get him to eat it, and once he gives it a fair shot, he could learn to love it and become a lifelong fish lover. Martial arts shows and movies are full of these kinds of situations as well, where an old master will insist that his pupil do some menial task, and in the end the task improves his strength, awareness, or skill in some way. So it is possible to bear false witness in support of your neighbor, but sadly it's not nearly as common. Learning to avoid being manipulated is the same as learning to avoid being deceived, and again, the Bible offers some helpful tips. Beware of false prophets who come to you in the clothing of sheep, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. By their fruits you shall know them. Do men gather grapes of thorns, or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, and the evil tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Matthew seven fifteen to 17 When following someone's advice leads to terrible disaster, it's usually best to be suspicious of them in the future. Don't be easily manipulated by every person who says they're Christian or are trying to help you. And Jesus answering said to them, Take heed that no man seduce you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and they will seduce many. Matthew 24, 4-5 The Lord is Jesus. Some people will do his will, and some people will only try to manipulate us. But no one can ever take his place in our lives, and staying close to him and his commandments can help to protect us from being led astray by hucksters and other manipulating people. Next, what does the Bible have to say about economics? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.